Hey, it's Wayne Purnell, Dr. P. Thank you for asking me anything. Ask Dr. P. Uh, I am the Outfluencer and your Powerful Presence Mentor. And I got a question under the heading of Ask Dr. P. And that is, uh, how do I handle negative memories? This question came from Don. How do I handle negative memories? And the question that I have back is, do they make you cringe? How do you know they're negative? Um, what happens to you? And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that we need to be thinking about is what do they mean to you when you have these negative memories? And we all have these, uh, these kind of reflections where we look back on something and go, I wish that it had been done differently or I wish I'd lived differently or responded differently. If that's what's happening, then the way to think about the negative memories is that you are actually holding on to something that the other person's totally forgotten. Um, sometimes it's like, oh, I wish I'd handle it differently. It's like this anger response. And you're really, you're angry with yourself. Look, the, the idea is, is this, uh, there are negative emotions I'm just, I'm trying to move something out of the way and it started to make a thing. Um, anyway, there are emotions that we've identified as negative, right? And it's like feeling bad, feeling depressed. Look, it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel anger. Um, here's the thing is that fear and shame and guilt actually don't serve you. Uh, fear, you know, there's... I've seen all this writing about, yeah, fear is this, you know, negative emotion. It's not. But I've also seen the, the writing that says that fear is really an important emotion. And it's not. <laughs> it actually serves to paralyze you. Um, fear shuts you down and uh, excitement ignites you. And so fear is not a great emotion. Awareness is what's really important. And you can substitute awareness for fear. You can substitute caution for fear, right? It's okay to be cautious. It's okay to have awareness. But if you're feeling fear and you're feeling shut down, where does that really get you? Look, in my uh, very first book, it's called Choosing Your Power. It's the orange one behind me. I have five books out there. Kind of proud of that. Uh, <laughs> they didn't happen by accident, right? So I am proud that I worked on those. Look, in the in choosing your power, I talk about awareness leads to choice, and choice leads to more awareness. So when you recognize how do I how, that I, when you recognize that you've had a bad memory, uh, I've I've remembered something and it's really frustrating me and it's making me upset and. It's like, well, what is it? Recognize this. Your cells, <laughs> I've been told this. I don't know the scientific uh, uh, truth behind it, but I, I believe that there's a, it's substantially true. And that's that the cells in your body replace themselves about every seven years. You're getting brand new cells in every part of your body. And what that means to you is if you've got a negative memory that it dates back, you know, let's say you're an adult in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, beyond, and you have a negative memory of something that happened to you when you were four, five, six, seven years old, that happened to a very different person. Your personality has changed. Your entire cells have changed the person that you were isn't that person and so just remember this you did the best you could with the information you had right so if if you know negative memories it's a it's a very broad question it's like well i remember just last week so and so was mad at me it's like okay that's a memory or from your childhood you know, decades ago, this thing happened and I wish I'd, I'd handled it differently or I wish, my, I wish my mom was there to protect me or I wish, and it's like, okay, everybody in that situation did what they needed to do 
to the best of their ability. Even the person that was being the bad person um, was driven by something. And you weren't singled out. It wasn't about you personally. And so to recognize that if for some reason, even if it was about you personally, you currently are a different person and you did the best you could with the memories you, with the, uh, with the skill set you had at the time. So going back in time and looking at that, look at it as if it's you looking at a storybook. And here's a story about somebody who was strong and courageous and resilient because the fact that you're asking the question now means that you've gotten through something that created a trauma for you or that created a bad experience for you. You got through that bad experience far enough to be able to ask the question, how do I handle the memory of that experience? That tells me you're creative, you're courageous, maybe creative too, but it tells me, Don, that you are courageous. It tells me that you are resilient. And it tells me that you're willing to keep moving forward and do what you can to let go of the negative memories. What I will say about them also is that if you can find a space of gratitude for the learning that you got based on how you responded since the time of whatever incident it was that caused that bad memory. I don't know if it was your boss yelled at you at work or if, you know, uh, a wicked uncle did something bad to you. You know, it's, it, it, it's like either way. I mean, there's different levels of yikes, that's bad. Um, and I'm not making light of it. It's, it's really, I'm giving you an example of that's a pretty big spectrum. Um, just recognize that you did the best you could with the tools that you had at the time that since that time you've been working through it and you've been gaining new tools and new understanding, the strongest tool you can have, there are two of them. One is perspective. You take yourself out and you look at it differently. And the other is gratitude, which is um, how can I be grateful for the person that I was in that situation, right? You don't have to be grateful for the person that inflicted the pain. Um, but you can be grateful that you have been able to transcend it, that it doesn't actually define you. And that's a big deal too, that the, the incident, the bad, the thing that caused the bad memory doesn't define you. You're much bigger than that. And if it's been years or decades, <laughs> you're much different than that. And so it's not your shame to carry right? Remember that guilt, shame, doubt, fear, those aren't helpful. And they're not even, I don't know, they're, they're just not part of a, uh, a, a, call it a spiritual lexicon, you know, that, that if you have any of those, they were used to control. And if you experience them now, then you are at someone else's control. And so recognize that to break free from fear, shame, guilt, doubt, to break free from that and to recognize that you are stronger, you are resilient, you do have courage, that, um, that you are allowed to have caution, you are allowed to have awareness, you are allowed to have more choice and that all of that will bring you freedom and that's really what you're after. Bad, bad memories mean that you're attached to something that is following you. And if you could bless that something and let it go, it's great. Um, sometimes I'll say one more thing, we'll wrap this up. Sometimes the bad memories come from a bad relationship. And again, if you get into a space of gratitude and beyond that compassion, if you can move to compassion for the other person, you are recognizing that that other person's life is very tiny and constricted 
Otherwise, they wouldn't be responding in that way or reacting to the world that way. Their life is very tiny and your life is very expansive, which is how you found me to ask this question. It's like you are looking for the right people. You're someone who lifts others. I know you, Don, and and you're looking for others that you can gather around to to uh, to lift and support along the way. So thank you for asking that question. Thank you. That was awesome. Remember, uh, guilt, shame, fear, doubt, those are going to paralyze you and constrict you and ultimately kill you. <laughs> They'll kill your soul. And so what you need to do is to let go of them to recognize they don't have any place for you. They don't, they, they only serve to anchor you to something that someone else isn't even thinking about, right? You're going through it and it's like, if only, and it's like, that's long gone. It's not even a memory for the other person. So you get to break that chain. You get to let it go. Stay aware, engage in choice. What am I choosing to experience now? And more important, what am I choosing to give as an experience for other people? And that's, that's where I would take that. The bad memories, you know, um, the stuff that keeps you up at night. What I've learned to do is to actually bless it. It's like, thank you. This is interesting. I, I look at it as this is interesting. I don't look at it as, oh, someone is judging me. They're not. They're not. They're not thinking about it. You're thinking about it. So let go of it. Know that you'll get through it. You are courageous. You are resilient. You're strong. You have choice. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Ask Dr. P. I'm Dr. Wayne Purnell, the Outfluencer and your Powerful Presence Mentor. I'll see you here again for another question. Keep them coming. And if you want to uh, look through some of my blogs, please, please look at waynepurnell.com or dynamicleader.com. They both point you to my website, okay? Also over my shoulder, you'll see the logo for One Sharp Sword, my podcast. So feel free to tune into One Sharp Sword and go to waynepurnell.com to look around. I've got books, courses, free blogs, all kinds of stuff that you can, you can check out. Again, ask Dr. P., that's me. I'll see you here again. Bye-bye.